Charles Kingman is dying. He's got the cancer, and uh, he wants to play Lear before he dies. I cried. Tell him. It's not about money. It's not fame. It's, it's not about the festival. It, he just needs to, needs to play Lear. And the problem is that it's a killer part. I mean, physically and emotionally, this will literally kill him. It's terrifying. Now tell him about me, about how this affects me. Oh, I know. Um, ask him about my higher purpose. Oliver Wells, yes. Was he a passionate person? Famously. Why are we talking about Oliver Wells? Well, his name has come up quite a few times. Oliver Wells? Yes, you've mentioned him on several occasions. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. Yeah, you have. No. <laughs> Oliver Wells directed you in seven plays at the festival. Oliver Wells betrayed you. Oliver Wells destroyed the soul of the festival. I'm not going to write, write, write. I mean, he's part, he was part of my life for a number of years, whether I liked it or not, so obviously his name's going to come up. I mean, I had a pet dog when I was a kid. His name was Ruffles. He was part of my life for 11 years. You've never mentioned Ruffles. Do you consider uh, him a mentor? Sounds like he's haunting you. Oliver, not Ruffles. Haunting me? You know, you should listen to yourself. <laughs> well, no, I don't, I don't mean literally, of course. You know, the people who've, who've made an impact on us, our, our parents, friends, loved ones, often linger in our minds long after they've left our lives. They become part of the mechanism of our psyche. I think it would be helpful if we focused on Oliver for a while. Oh, finally! <laughs> When life takes its toll, when fate treats you bad You used to be king, and now you've been had Alone with your fool, you think you'll go mad It's nice to take the walk in the rain A stomp through a storm is what I'd advise When people you trust tell nothing but lies And kidnap your friend and gouge out his eyes It's nice to take the walk in the rain are evil plotters A bit about to shower will keep you sane When all has been said and all have been slain It's good to take a walk in the rain for several hours Helps to have a howl in the rain without your clothes on Nice to take a walk in the rain She puts her bread in the fridge. Who puts bread in the fridge? Dancers, apparently. Bread is big. Bread takes up room. It's an insult. Triple threat. Mm. It's not like she eats anything anyway. Have you seen her? Maybe she eats glue, maybe paste. She's an idiot. Have you seen her with the paper? All she reads is entertainment and life, and the rest she just tosses aside. That would be the newsprint. Oh my god. You hate her so much. I don't hate her. She's an idiot. Hey, Charles. He's such a prick. Am I that bad? So no, I knew you were gonna say that. No, God, don't be. You are an amazing actress. He is a prick. There is no <coughs> connection between your amazing acting abilities and his prickish behavior. All right, look, I got an idea. I'm just gonna cheer you up. Today on our break, we're gonna fuck up the musical rehearsal. How? Why? Because we're just gonna go. We're gonna do something fucking juvenile, and it's, it's gonna be awesome. Three words. Stink. Bomb. I might be really into that. Me too. No. I'm serious. Let's do that. I'm serious. Let's do it. This is really going to make me feel better. I don't know what to tell you. He was my director. Oh, I was so much more than that. He was, uh, you know, kind of like a mentor for a little while. And he was sort of like a best friend for a bit there. And then he stabbed me in the back. And uh, the last time you spoke to him was... On the night that he happily died. That's right. I tried to tell Did you... Did I ever mention before that he was a drunk? I've been reading about um, this theory. Now, this theory says that every artist has one person who is their private audience, someone that they, they desire to please, or someone they're angry with or want to communicate with in, in some way. Is Oliver your audience? Oh, I love that. Last night's preview was very revealing. The show failed 
and I'll tell you why. We have become too concerned with logic. The true power of the musical comedy is its inherent absurdity. People sing and dance apparently spontaneously, but in unison. It's ridiculous. And the common man finds this absurdity calming. Why? Because his own pathetic existence is unrelentingly logical and ordered. I know this for a fact because I've spent many years observing the common man at shopping malls and country fairs. We need more focus on the absurdity of the genre. That is why I have decided to cut three scenes that are purely expositional and replace them with inappropriate dance numbers. We're cutting the story? Yes, and replacing it with dancing. Tap dancing, if possible. Uh, Darren, I'm sorry, could, could I say something? What? Uh, I, I don't think that this is the, the solution uh, to the problem. I mean, I, I've seen a bunch of musicals. That is because you are a common man. OK. <laughs> but uh, what I'm trying to say is that what I find enjoyable about it, you know, as the common man, is, is not just the. Speak more quickly. OK. The, the characters. Uh, we need to care about them. You know, like in uh, a chorus line. OK. You know, uh, we, we needed to get to know each and every one of those dancers. And I think we need to make the audience care about uh, our, our characters. One uh, of the many pitfalls of being a common man is that you have a limited understanding of your own reality. You are amused by something, but you are incapable of understanding the mechanism of that amusement. I pity you. <laughs> okay, but Talking no. to you about musical theater is like chatting with a dog about why it likes to lick its ass. Okay. You know You're wasting my time. Stage management, the common man, is banned from rehearsal. Excellent. I am banning yapping. Yes, I know what a coup is. But what I'm asking is, what is the new general like? Is he a killer? Well, how does he feel about musicians? Is he likely to kill the musicians if I send them back? Yes, why don't you check on that? Hey, Jeffrey. Can I ask your advice about something? I wouldn't. Thanks. Okay, there's a problem with the musical. Uh, it's got to do with the way, you know, the, the whole thing is, you know, uh, put together. Structural problem? Yeah, it's got to do with the uh, the, the segments of the story, you know, the, the, the segments. The beats? Yeah, well, they're in the wrong order. And uh, because of that, you know, the whole path that you take with the in the, in the, in the musical, the whole thing. The arc. The arc. It, well, it's wrong. And, and, uh, and I think I know how to fix it. Well, that's... Right. Yeah. Uh, it's just that every time I bring up my ideas in rehearsal, Darren yells at me. He says I yap. He's banned yapping from rehearsal. Do you yap? He makes me nervous, Darren. Well, he should make you nervous. He's an idiot in a position of power. But don't yap. Just make your point and provide a solution. OK. Rehearsal is all about arguing the material. Well, of course, there's a limit to that. And beyond that limit is grandstanding. And that's something that actors absolutely love to do in order <laughs> to drive directors right out of their fucking minds. I think it's a valid point. Barbara, <laughs> you are talking about something that happens in the final scene of the play. I know. We are working on the first scene of the play. But this is about who Goneril is. If she commits suicide at the end of the play, that makes her one kind of a person. If she's killed by Reagan, that makes her another kind of person. She commits suicide. How do we know that? We know this because Edmund tells us this. How does he know? He doesn't see it happen. It happens off stage. Reagan could easily have stabbed Goneril when she realized she had been poisoned by her. Reagan was that kind of a character, right? Sure. OK, all right. Do either of you have any evidence, any evidence in the text to support this angry, dying sister hypothesis. As much evidence as Edmund has to support his. But he's in the scene, you silly cow. He is a little bit more invested in the material than you. Look, Charlie, I'm going to play Goneril as a cold-blooded, ruthless killer. 
it's going to be a little hard for the audience to accept that she would kill herself. If they can accept that Lear has a black daughter, they'll accept anything. Asshole. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is great, great. Woo! How about we take a break? How about a little break? 15 minutes, everyone. The company is unifying very nicely. Yes, just like the Balkans. She's just passionate. <laughs> That's one word for it. This is what I don't understand. The song is good. There's nothing wrong with the song. And yet it gets no reaction. No, it must be you, Megan. You're doing something wrong. Let's try it again. Okay. Paul? This is gonna be so good. Right. Like, so good. to be tasted and touched that's been it for me heard is the word and the word is what sets me free i am lulu was it long ago my soul was dying was it long ago i thought that life was too absurd Let's try it again, only this time, try imagining you're blind. Mm, what's that smell? I don't know, but it's perfect. Use it. like a general, so the only reason she would kill herself would be, you know, death before dishonor. But what does she say just before she leaves? She says, the laws are mine, not thine. She's not saying, woe is me, I'm gonna end it all. She's saying, fuck you, Albany, I'm gonna do what I want, right? Oh, we generally don't talk about work at the dinner table. You know, it's, it's not really a rule, but. Right, well, that is, that is smart and it's, Probably good for the relationship. The only other thing, really, and I'm going to make this short, is that it would make sense that Edmund is wrong about the suicide. People are wrong about everything in this play. Lear is wrong about his daughter. She's wrong about I'm Edmund. sorry. I hate this. I know. I mean, it takes every ounce of patience I have in rehearsal not to take a skill saw to that woman's head. And then I come home, and she's here, and it starts all over again. Jeffrey, she cares about me. What do you want me to do? Ask her to leave? Yes, now, please. I can't. All right, tomorrow, over breakfast, in between when she says something like, oh, I have a few ideas about the set, or I think Goneril should wear a helmet. Jeffrey, she's my best friend. I can't just kick her out. Well, what am I? You're my guy. Uh, and you were going to say lover. I was going to say Guy lover, lover guy. Well, we haven't made love in weeks. I'm gonna sleep on the couch. Oh, don't do that. This isn't a sitcom. Oh, well, yes, actually it is. I have a broken wang, and there is a lizard queen living downstairs. Come back to bed, we can work this out. You can leave in the morning. Oh, fuck. This is how you get... This is working it out? Where are you going? Well, you're kicking me out of the house. No, I'm not. Okay, I am. But well, what's the big deal? Last year, you lived under the theater. Okay, wait a minute. Are we breaking up? No, we're not. I 
love you. I'll miss you terribly. This is only temporary. What the hell? Well, my baggage is now literal. I see that. Did you have a fight with Ellen? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, one minute we were talking about things, the next minute I was packing these bags. And where will you stay? Well, there's this really nice storage room at the theater. I've stayed there before, and I know what you're going to say. He's not going to say anything. Just going to make a little note. Wednesday, 8 a.m., deluded. What am I going to say? Well, you're probably going to say something about the separation of life and work, but I don't think you seem to understand this. The theater is not like any other workplace. It really is a family. And uh, some of them you love, and some of them you hate. Well, you know, there are many people say that their work is like their family, their boss is their father, their secretary is their wife. And then there's crazy Uncle Jeffrey. Oh, would you shut up? Sorry, I interrupted no, you. No, not you. It's... I'm tired. I didn't sleep last night. Well, you don't have to talk if you don't want to. I don't want to. Your time. I suppose I always have thought of myself as the father of the festival family. And the actors were my children, or some of them, the principals. You know, apprentices, swings, members of the young company. I never felt a connection whatsoever. I mean, that's why I could have sex with the odd apprentice. Because, well, he wasn't my child, in a sense. Oh, God, that sounds terrible. If you really want to understand the way I feel about family, we have to talk about my childhood. My father was a brute, an absolute brute. That's why mother and I drank. Good morning. Not really. All of our fire extinguishers failed inspection. They have to be recharged today when I have the health and safety survey and the quarterly financial reports to generate. Is there a record player in this building? Because I just fished out all my old Broadway musicals and I want to kick back in my office and listen to them. Have you heard a single word that I said? Yeah, you got a lot of work. So do you have so much work that you can't answer my questions? Yes, actually. Anna, this is work too, you know? The musical's in trouble. I'm doing research. Okay, so it's enjoyable work, but you know, you should try that. You should do some enjoyable work. Thanks, I'll try and remember that tip. Hey, listen, I tripped over some Bolivians on the way in. I'm aware of that, but if I send them back, they'll be shot. You want me to send them back to be shot? No, Miss Sarcasm. Just, they can't live in the hallway. It's a fire hazard. I'll try and find them temporary accommodation. Okay. So, is there a record player? Are you committed to this? Well, what choice do I have? Love, Ellen. I hate Barb. I'm talking about Charles, about his playing Lear. Oh. Do you understand how important this is to me? Well, explain to me again how this is your ticket out of here. Oh, it's karma. You're alive. You wouldn't understand. So, Charles plays Lear, you go to gay heaven? You know, I do not appreciate the levity of your tone at the moment. But what if he dies mid-run? Well, it's death with dignity, something I never had. Voila! Voila! Mm, great. I guess it's the... Green room. Jeffrey, please. Oliver, this isn't about one guy. I have a responsibility to the entire company, to the festival. This is about theater ethics. Theater ethics? That's like saying whorehouse morals. We're doing the storm scene today. We'll see, uh, we'll see if he's got it in him. I can't hear him. I can hear him fine. You sufferers and All right, hold it! Just for a moment. Thank you, Maria. Let's uh, take it again, but scale the wind down a couple of ticks. I can do it on my own. Lear is the storm. Remember? It's just a little aggressive texture. It's a fucking excuse! 
Thank you, Charles. Please continue. Put holy water in the dry carefully! Hold it! Turn it off! Would you? Just leave the thunder. Please! All right, Maria, cut the wind. From the top, Frank. Blow winds and crack your cheeks. Rage, blow. You see, you counteract the hurricanes. Spout till you have drenched our steeples, down the clocks. Leah is the storm. You shout for us and not ex. Uh, 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 Maria, hang on. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, we'll take ten. That's where it should be. Should be a battle. Here you go. Oh, let's get these bags out of the way. You leaving? Things aren't going that badly, are they? No, 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 no. It's just a little problem at home. An uninvited house guest. Mm -hmm. It's that cow barber, isn't it? <laughs> Where are you going to stay? Here. Here? The theater? No, here in this room, on this couch, actually. That's disgusting. I have a couch in my apartment. You can sleep there. No, Charles, I'd be in your way. Look, I know you're hesitant to go through with this. My death wish, I mean. Just spend a little time with me. Maybe you won't care so much whether I live or die. That's some offer. Hi. It's my bread, my cheese, my tomatoes. I'm not doing anything wrong, okay? You just said hi, that's all. So how are you liking your room? It's a pretty cool place, eh? Somebody put a rubber snake in my bed. And last Saturday, there was jello in my shoes. <laughs> it's like grade two around here. Sorry. For whoever did that. I apologize to you from them. Whoever. Hey, um, I heard you sing the other day. I was on break and I guess I passed by your rehearsal. You're... You have a beautiful voice. Thanks. What'd you hear? Sorry? What was I singing? Oh, um, something about... Wanting to be heard and... I'm trying to be heard. Trying to be heard. Trying to be heard. It's a pretty song. Ah. <laughs> We're having problems with it, actually. I thought that sounded great. Really. Thanks. So did you always hey. want to be a singer? Or? Miss Trailer Park Boys. I taped it for you. Thanks. Why are you so late? Oh, I was watching them rehearse the storm. <coughs> oh my god, what is this? Soy milk? It's mine. Why don't you look first? Why don't you eat anything normal? Wipe the spout before you put it back. Wipe your own spout. There's the bathroom, balcony, if you want to end it all. A chime for every pill. Three blue ones in the morning and one white one every two hours afterwards. Now I'll call Mrs. Laundry and order you a cot. No, no, don't. I'm, the couch is fine. You sure? Yeah, I like couches. Uh, you know, you sit on a couch, you work, you lie on a couch, you sleep. You can eat? I can eat. Tortellini tonight. No sauce, just olive oil. I can't tolerate spice anymore. It's another curse. Well, I actually welcome simple food because Ellen, well, Ellen tends to cook beyond her means. Jeffrey, the illness is not a pleasant thing to witness. 
I don't sleep well. And I have trouble keeping down my food. And my body makes vulgar sounds that I can't control. Well, I have lengthy conversations with an invisible companion. Shall I set three places for dinner? Tortellini and olive oil? Don't bother. Hi, Anna. Is Jeffrey still there? Oh. Uh, no, it's not important. I just called to say hi. I just found four bottles of Cloudy Bay. Uh, thanks, Anna. Try to relax. Bye. I just found four of the most amazing bottles of sparkling wine from New Zealand. We are going to have a girl's night in. I've played Lear before, you know, Jeffrey. I know. Yeah, and I was terrible. I was 25, and I was the only one in the company who could grow a beard. And I'm sure you were brilliant, because you've always been brilliant. And as you know, it was you that inspired me to this life in the theater. I am the personification of that particular cliché. And like the theater, I'm boldly fighting a slow, undignified death. Oh, Charles. All right. I'll lay off the gallows humor till you've finished eating. No, no. Keep it coming. You are going to let me play him, aren't you? Don't feel pressured just because you're in his house eating his food. You know, I have a lot of other responsibilities. I've got a, a board. I have an entire company of actors. Well, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. You just don't want my blood on your hands. All right, let me ask you this question. Is this really how you want to die? Wouldn't you? You're how much in debt? Twenty-seven thousand. Twenty-seven thousand dollars in debt. Your boyfriend's crazy, and your career has ground to a halt. Well, I wouldn't put it that way. But you're the best actor you've ever been. It's true. You're fabulous, and I love you, and I want you to be happy. But you're a wreck. Ah, oh, I don't think I like these girls' nights in. Hey, did did you follow up with Chris? He's doing a show for some network somewhere in the States. You see, this is what drives me crazy. You've never known how to take care of yourself. Never? I'm not trying to tell you how to run your life. Oh, I think you are, actually. No, no, no. All I'm saying is, isn't it possible that you've grown out of this place? I mean, give yourself a chance. Call Chris in the morning. Promise me you will. I will. I will. Now, can we stop talking about my miserable life and watch Denzel? I just yell at you because I love you. And you want me to be happy. I know. Mm. <sighs> what do you see when you look at him? A lawsuit. Come on, really? I don't know. Childhood hero? An actor? An old actor? Your father. Did you get that on Dr. Phil? You're a lousy therapist, Oliver. This would be talking to your invisible friend, eh? I did warn you. <laughs> Jeffrey, would you mind helping me into the bedroom? I think I overdid it today. <laughs> I think it was a storm. Probably trying to impress you. I can see your leer, Charles, very clearly. The problem is the cancer, I know. But you see, I manage by day and by night to help me sleep. All I need is my medication. And your medication is? Heroin. Heroin. Mm. OK. Oh, damn it! God damn it! That's why there's so few aged junkies. All this fiddling work. Oh, for God's sake, Jeffrey, where's your humanity? Help him. 
help with the heroin? Yeah, please, do you mind? Just make sure you keep the needle parallel to the vein. I can feel that now. I think I just said yes. I shot him up. Shot him up? With heroin. I stuck a needle in his arm. How did you feel when you shot him up? <laughs> it's not like I was contributing to the delinquency of a senior. <laughs> but it was an act of mercy. Oh, of course it was. Tell him about your father. No. It wasn't. No, yes, it was. But he had nothing to do with it, so no, I'm not going to talk about my father. Well, that says something, doesn't you it? You don't have to talk about your father. The fact that you're so reluctant to even broach the subject. I find it strange that you would say that out of the blue, though. You see? You know, it's not exactly out of the blue. I got this whole sort of... Okay, look. I saw Charles sleeping there in that chair, and I started to think about... <sighs> Huh? 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 Come on. Why do you find this difficult to talk about this? Because... Uh, because you're trying to find your father. You're trying to relive... Okay! Because Charles expects me to give everything, everything that I have ever worked for, for him, just like Oliver. I mean... My father. Well, that was so satisfying. <laughs> Whoa, 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 wait up. <laughs> Boy, the dancers walk fast. Must be your legs. Because they're long. The dancers' legs. You go to rehearsal? Yeah. Me too. Oh, what are you in? Uh, were you serious? King Lear. Oh, right. I forgot. Huh. I play the heroic Edgar. Oh, I don't know the play. King Lear? Mm, I never saw it. Is Edgar a big part? Pretty big, yeah. Yeah, but you never read it, not in high school? Uh, I'm not much of a reader, but I was in West Side Story at the Etobicoke School of the Arts, and that was based on Romeo and Juliet. Right. Yeah, I know that. Uh, we're talking about King Lear? Well, they were both written by the same guy. Right. Like, I'm just saying I'm not much of a reader, but I was in West Side Story. Yeah, no, I got it. I, got, I, I know what you're saying. So, you liked my song? I, yes, I really did. Yeah. Oh, I like it too. Like, Lulu feels like nobody is listening to her. Right. And then there's a key change and she finds her voice. <laughs> and it's totally in my belt range, so I can really let go. I mean, they're talking about cutting it. Uh, well, I hope they don't. <laughs> Do you want to go for a drink with me? Well, <laughs> well I thought we were the enemy. Ah, uh, um, honestly, I love the way you sing. Well, I'll think about it. Look at Lulu, Lulu stopped her crying. I know what's wrong. Darren, can I just have five minutes? Not now. It's Lulu, Darren. It's Lulu. It's, it's who she is. It's the beats. You see, it's Lulu. Stop it! Stop your hissing. I cannot think with you hissing in my ear. I'm sorry. It's just, I know what the problem is. I, look, I made a flow chart. Uh, the entire first act is about Lulu trying to find her voice. When she sings, give my, my heart a voice, she's actually realizing for the first time that she's not just a prostitute. She has a soul. Yeah. Everything you are saying is pathetically obvious. This is not a second act song! Lulu's ballad has to end the first act. Look, then, then, then we cut the restaurant scene completely. 
And, and we would open the second act with the dance number at the crack house. Can't you see? That's it. You have undermined my authority for the last time with your flow charts and your yapping. You are banned from rehearsals. Darren, Darren, I think he's right. Oh my God. It's a whole different show. Really, we gotta try this. Okay, we will try it once. <gasps> This afternoon for the preview. But if it fails, you are banished forever. Thank you, Darren. Yep, yep, yep. Of Megan? The triple threat? Yeah, yeah. Are you surprised? Yeah. We're back, everyone. Act one, scene one. We'll pick it up where we left off. But you said I should ask her out. Oh, no, 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 I, 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 I didn't say you should ask her out. I, I said that she was your type. Yeah. What? No, no, it's great. I'm glad, you know, you're dating a really cute idiot who happens to live in our house. It's great. I should go. Charles is waiting to rip me apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, good luck. Gone, Earl. Our eldest born. Speak first. Sir! I love you more than word could wheel in the matter. Dearer than eyesight, space. Where do I look? Well, uh, you look at your daughter. Who? Oh, sorry. You look at Barbara. Beyond what can be valued, rich or rare. Of all these bounds. Cordelia has a line, Charles. What? Cordelia has a line. And what shall Cordelia do? Love and Wh be silent. Where, where, where are we? What shall Cordelia do? Little, don't start on me, young lady. If you hadn't jumped all over my line. I didn't. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> I, then, 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 you see, I can't understand you when you do speak. You mumble your cues. This has nothing to do with you me. You see, and that's why you'll never be any good. It's uh, the job of an actor to be, ex uh, 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 to be involved every minute. You're gone, Earl, when you come into the rehearsal hall, and you're gone, Earl, when you leave it, and you constantly- I I'm Cordelia. I'm playing Cordelia. Okay, if you're gonna blame someone else for your own senility, at least figure out who the fuck they're playing. God, I didn't mean to swear like that, not in front of Charles. It's okay. He had it coming. Charles, I can't think. My mind is all muddled. Uh, I didn't take my hello paradigm this morning. It gives me constipation, so I skip a day sometimes. Oh, God, it's hell. It. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I, I... Charles, just, just breathe. Breathe. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply. That's it. Oh, my God. All right, Maria, just calm down. It's just a man breathing, all right? Now get May home. We're going to take him home. I'm so sorry, Jeffrey. And apologize to the girl for me. Yes, I will. Uh, what the fuck? Right. That was nothing. That was just chemicals. What now? Okay, well, we can work on Edmund Gloucester, and then, I don't know, I guess I send everyone home. What are you going to tell them? Sorry, everyone, our Lear's gone mad? Well, no, I'll say that he's, you know, got the flu or something. The flu? He was staggering around the stage like a drunk. All right, what then? Tell him he's a drunk. Tell them he's a drunk? Look, this will not be the last such incident, Jeffrey. You'd better lay the groundwork for deception now. Theater's full of drunks. It's an easy sell. You're a drunk. Some actors need a whippy boy. There are dozens of them. Petty tyrants, the lot of them. It's Alzheimer's. I've seen it before. Uncle Pete used to wear a hat with his name on it. But this is the theater, not a mental ward. This theater? <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Um... Well, obviously, Charles is not having a good day. This is not uncommon for people in his situation. And uh, he would like me to apologize to all of you. Most specifically, he would like to apologize to you, Sophie. 
I will endeavor in the future to be more vigilant. And Charles has agreed. <clears throat> he has agreed to attend a meeting. All right, let's get started. Act one, scene two. Is it drunk? That was my alternate theory. Are you okay? Huh, fine. Can I help? Mm-hmm. We can get that lizard queen out of our house. Jeffrey. All right, failing that, why don't we rehearse? Act one, scene two. Maria, please. Jeffrey, did you hear about this afternoon's preview? No. It was fabulous! <laughs> yeah. Do you want to know why? No. Because Darren Nichols made some substantial changes to the structure of the show. Do you want to know why he made those substantial changes? No. Because I suggested them, just like you said. You know, I, th I thought it through, and um, I, I made a flow chart. No. Yes. Yes, and he's, uh, and he's keeping them for tonight, for the opening. You're coming, right? Oh, it would take an act of God to keep me away. All right. All right! Woo! into the storm. The irony is heartbreaking. Why don't you stop him? Is there a heath nearby? Shut up. It's a beautiful day on East Hastings. I didn't wake up on the floor. It's a beautiful day on East Hastings for a whore. It's a beautiful day on East Hastings. Profits are starting to soar. It's a beautiful day on East Hastings to want more. Like the widest the world is East Hastings. A patchwork of cuttings and pastings. It's a beautiful day on East Hastings to want more.
crap. Who's crappy crap? You're just blinded by lust. Possible. Great show. Oh, <laughs> well, thank watch you. Yourself. <laughs> you saw it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Felt pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> we got a standing ovation. I know. <laughs> I started it. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion? I think I should walk you home. I don't know if you've heard about this, but there are crazy people walking the streets tonight. I'm serious. <laughs> it's, it's total psychos. <laughs> Why are you being so nice to me? I told you. I'm your biggest fan. Wasn't long ago I thought that life was too absurd. Now I've got it figured out. Study. I can't go on tonight. I'm drinking with my buddy. I'm getting good and tight. Before they raise the curtain, I'll be higher than a kite. So call me understudy. I can't go on tonight. Tell the cast and crew to break a leg. Break a leg. They'll roll me out and up the bloody keg. Bloody keg. I need to is the pain that life can bring. Life can and liquor is what will hit the spot. The play is not the thing. So call me understudy. I think it's only right. My diction will be money. I'll ever find me light. Before the intermission, I'll be pissing on a sprite. So call me understudy. I can't go on. He can't go on. I won't go on. He shan't go on. I can't go on tonight. Damn right. <laughs> 